When you think of a tragic Ace Attorney character, you probably think of Adrian Andrews. However, I beg to differ. On a fateful night at 11.20 p.m., Volant arrives at Magnifi's hospital room. This was due to the blackmail the old man had over Volant and Zack's heads. But unlike Zack, Volant knows that this isn't just a simple shoot me request. This is a test. Zack is visiting him first, so a metaphorical devil on Volant's shoulder speaks to our troubled friend. All Volant has to do is walk into the room with the sleeping Magnifi and shoot him square in the forehead and then frame Zack. But deep down, um, Volant's not a murderer, he's jealous, he's spiteful, he's quite arrogant, a lot of other negative words, but the one thing he isn't at heart is a murderer, even if he desires to be one, so he turns away, but then Magnify stops him as the bear have their final chat, a mentor to his protege, albeit if the mentor was a miserable old man who blackmailed people, but you know the point still stands. They begin to engage in conversation with Volant discovering that Magnify had already passed his tricks and the right onto Zach, which he already had a feeling would happen, but the confirmation doesn't exactly help Volant at all, with Misery Man asking Volant to stand by Zack and help him. Magnify outright states that Volant doesn't have the draw that Zack has, which if you're wondering means Volant doesn't have as much star power. He doesn't attract and captivate the audience like Zack. Now you have to understand how morally destroying that would be to hear, even if he knew that. Again told that your face is horrible, the sheer audacity is outrageous. Imagine having a dream that you strive for every day to achieve, and then someone prevents you from achieving your dream, getting into that beautiful place, and then they tell you to help someone else live your dream out. I mean, if I was Volant, I would have walked back into that room and... Volant leaves the room dejected. Deep down, he always knew it would happen, but he had just became official. He was always going to be trapped behind Zack's shadow. He wasn't going to get the troop right. He wasn't getting the magic secrets. It was Zack. It was always Zack. It was always going to be Zack. He'd never get the appreciation he wants because he isn't as valued. And you know, love isn't enough to make it all right. Leave me dead to the world. It's not an exaggeration to assume Volant died then and there as a man with his morals. The man who died standing. A tale that exists in real life with footballing legend Robert Baggio by the way. But then, a gunshot rings out from Magnify's room. Volant goes to see, and inside, he finds Magnify dead by suicide, and the darkness in Volant's heart fully retains. He may have died when he left that room, but now he's alive. Magnify never committed suicide. It was Zack. Just as he had fought previously, but this time, it was going to be his reality. Volant frames Zack for the suicide by altering the IV. Zack fire would be extinguished and Volant would no longer have to play second best to everyone or anyone. With those tricks, he could do anything. He'd be the greatest magician, far better than Magnify and Zack ever was, and thus our favourite staff wielding icon sets the stage for the Magnify murder case with a little twirl as our key witness. There's a quote I love from Joshua Graham saying, I survived, I survived because the fire inside burned brighter, brighter than the fire around me. me. This is a reference to him being burnt alive and thrown into a canyon. But the point is, his will to succeed and gain the success he believed himself to deserve outshot on the self-doubt he was currently going through. His dream deserves to exist like everyone else's. Does it really matter if he obtains it through dubious means? Not really. He's built on perseverance and overcoming struggles to achieve what you desire. It's not an issue for Land that he does what he does. He finds shame in it, but the shame doesn't compare to the feeling of being in Zack's shadow, never being recognised while others shine like diamonds ahead of him. This case especially shows how sad Volant's character is as he testifies to naturally incriminate Zack, as he has everything to gain from doing so. Volant is using this trial in an attempt to not only destroy Zack's reputation, but build himself up as the only real protege of Magnify while battling lawyer Jesus in Phoenix, right? And I'll give you a hint, he isn't exactly winning, he's more so getting his head caved in with a rock. As Phoenix continues to pick apart and prod at his testimony with the guilty verdict seemingly leaning towards him, despite the fact he isn't even guilty, he isn't even the real murderer, this trial's conclusion isn't what Volant expected for a plethora of reasons. Number one, no official verdict is brought down, as Zack thinks he's Assassin's Creed and he runs away, basically vanishing from existence. Number two, the the diary page, which I don't need to elaborate on by the way, happens. Now one would assume Zack literally running away from the trial and his lawyer presenting forged evidence would solve all the problems Volant has. Zack is gone, so what's the issue? A lot actually. Two main issues exist for him. Number one, Zack is gone, he's vanished like the wind. Legally however, he's still alive, which means Volant will have to wait seven years to get his hands on Magnify's tricks and all the little bonuses that come with it, unless Zack is obviously caught. Number two, Phoenix's cross-examination despite what ended up happening 
happening drives a metaphorical dagger into Volant. As in the public's eyes, Volant was too suspicious. It's clear to everyone Volant had to have been involved in this case to whatever extent, with the most natural conclusion being he was the real murderer, and in reality he was just being protected by Zack for an unknown reason. Much to Zack's own shock, by the way. This trial, this case, has blown up directly in his face. The trial's closure lingers in the Apollo Justice game, but Volant, I think he's the most affected by it due to the suspicions people hold against him. He isn't trusted. In many eyes, he's a murderer who got lucky. Scum of the earth, if you will. Volant went plummeting down, his career stagnating as he didn't have the troop rights. His own skills, which in his own ways were quite subpar compared to someone like Magnify, being forced to grin and bear when the same people who doubted him came to praise him. But one you may not realise is how in this trial, Zack shows him up again. Zack's disappearance was massive in the Ace Attorney universe for a lot of reasons, as we know. But Volant becomes essentially an afterthought. He testified to win, but somehow he ends up with a slow, bruising loss. He's forced to play second fiddle to Zack again, even with what was supposed to be his crowning achievement. And yet, he won't be crowned King of the Castle anytime soon. He'll have to wait seven agonizing long years to finally get what he deserves. Magnify's repertoire. The final conversation we have with Volant during the Mason system in the present shows us who he really is as a character, as Volant is presented with some juicy information. Firstly, his seven-year wait will mean nothing as the true brights are being passed on to Trucy. The man he thought to have been dead, Zack, was actually alive, handing all the tricks to his daughter. Now, that isn't even the bomb. Phoenix proceeds to show that Zack has officially signed a confession stating he murdered Magnify. It was him. He was the killer. Two things, obviously. Zack is still buried under a different identity and now is no longer with us. And Zack did not kill him. Now, Volant could have easily have just celebrated and said, I've won. This confession is totally real, guys. Trust me, bro. But Volant doesn't do that. He instead outright states that this confession isn't even worth the paper it's written on. Now, Phoenix already thinks that Volant killed Magnify, therefore he doesn't believe it anyway. But realistically, Volant does not have to deny this confession's fabrication. He was literally telling Phoenix it was Zack and then he left, stating him testifying was going to be his way out to finally succeed. But when Phoenix shows him the confession, the answer for all his prayers, he's appalled by it. This is seven years in the making for him, but he can't accept it. This is more so when I feel the play and the characters see Volant in a different light. Earlier during our investigations, we, we suspect Volant to be a dirty murderer who tried to frame Zack out of his own greed with no remorse, but that's pretty much not true. We expect an overconfident evil man, but we get a lonely, sad man who suffers so much mentally you can't even comprehend the turmoil he goes through, especially during these seven years, even if his actions were morally incorrect. The reason it's really sad is because Volant knows no matter how hard he tries, he'll never be on the level with anyone else in the troop. He won't be greater than Zack. He isn't better than Felissa. He simply cannot be better than Magnify, and it really helps you understand what drives him to frame Zack, as it's his only chance at achieving the greatness he thinks he deserves, but he couldn't achieve it since Zack always outshone him, despite Volant wanting to be held in the same regard. And it's such a great way to establish the why of it. Volant just wants love, similar to Lugami. I know that's a stupid comparison, but they're really similar characters in a context. Both men who may have a bit of skill, but were never going to get the appreciation they felt like they deserved or desired. Dreams can become a reality, and yet it seems other forces don't wish for that to happen. For some reason, fate continues to destroy him. He waits all this time. He's preparing for his grand return, just for it to be swept under the rug instantaneously. He is constantly undermined by Zack and his actions, even in death, and it showcases the more deeper characteristic of Volant, the feeling of inferiority, a feeling that runs through Volant's core continuously, even on his best days, the fear that he isn't good enough as he says. He lies to himself to mask the emotional turmoil of hurt inside him, the feeling of loneliness, the feeling that everyone around you is judging you incorrectly, creating falsehoods about the man that you are. The media did it to him too, painted him as a devil-like murderer, but then the same people come to him with smiles and laughs, asking for stories from him. Two face reporters that he is forced to smile for, oh, present himself to the cameras as a happy man who is extremely pleased to answer these questions when he hates these people. They tried to ruin him and now he's forced to acknowledge them. Volant is forced into scenarios unwillingly and most of the time he always comes off worse, whether it's because of his own actions or other causes. I mentioned it before but it's the classic rivalry where one will always be better than the other. All Might Endeavor, Goku, Vegeta, Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3. No matter what Volant does, he will never get the chance to shine as bright as the other members of the troop and it's really sad because it develops his character and it makes you understand his goals and his dreams, albeit in the negative context how he goes to perform them. The framing of Zack is an inherently evil act that he performs so he can get all of Magnify's tricks, so he himself can become the world famous magician and acquire the accolades and the reputation he desires. But despite how messed up that action is, he discovers that his seven year wait will mean nothing anyway. He acts how he acts because he's sick of hiding behind Zack. He doesn't want to be in his shadow anymore. He doesn't want to be second. He wants to be 
number one like he deserves. Being doomed to second place is a miserable thing, and he's just forced to keep losing. You genuinely understand why he would do that. It is one shot. It's all he has left, so he takes his shot. It's now or never for him. He'll never get an opportunity like this. There's no reason for him to not screw Zach. And to be honest, any of us would have done it, albeit probably not stage of suicide to look like a murder, but you get the point overall. He removes his main obstacle, and he will finally get the recognition he deserves, and thus begins his quest for success and glory. You have to understand his situation. He's carrying the world on his shoulders in the troop. Why should he not carry Magnify's legacy? Why does fate continue to toy with him all this time? I think Valance does not get enough love in the community and in the game in general, because for me, his character is the definition of what being second best your entire life can do to someone. I'm not trying to get all emotional on you all or anything, but second place sucks. First place is amazing. Third place is upsetting, but acceptable. But second place is devastating because you were so close and yet you were so far. Second place hurts a lot because you put all that work in just to fail at the final hurdle. And that's why Valant is so brilliant because he was stuck in second place for way too long and he realized he can finally have an opportunity to move himself onto the next level, but he couldn't. He couldn't do it because he's not a murderer. But when Magnify commits suicide, he's able to stage it because Valant's character has darkness inside him like the rest of the troop, but not enough for a more serious crime. Valant's character is far more amazing than you think. Naturally, this is my own opinion, but he has to be in the top tier for me at least because we are made to believe he's an egotistical man who thinks of himself as the greatest thing to grace the earth. But in reality, he has so much self-doubt in everything he does. You know the love triangle that Spark mentions? Valance just kept losing and too much loss drives people to do things that they wouldn't usually do. His character is tragic because he lives a lie. He lives the same lie for seven years straight with it lingering on his conscience. He's framed Zach, he's gonna get the rights. That's his story. That's what happened. That's what should happen. Nothing more, nothing less. Why do people not believe me? How can they doubt me? People never trusted him. The media never trusted him. When he built his reputation back up, that single trial lingered in his life like it did to many others as he was the key front. He's just a guy who couldn't stand being stuck in second place. He could have been satisfied with working behind Zach, but for him that was an insult for everything he stood for. He didn't deserve to be stuck to mediocrity while Zach hogged the spotlight. Valant hates that. He really wants to believe in himself, but you kind of feel like he just doesn't. I never felt when I saw him he was being genuine with himself or to others. Adrian Andrews' depression, as it's called, was the main focal point of Justice for All, as you know, with Miles being like, Shit, kill yourself. But I feel like Valant's character works better for it as we never get to truly understand the deeper psychology of his character. Valant's mental health probably fell through the floor over time as he was never going to be good enough and it hurt him. I think his character deserves to come back as he's too good enough to ignore. Adrian's depression is forced into public knowledge but Valant buries his deep in his heart because he's afraid of losing. He's never been good enough. He's afraid of never being good enough. Valant tries to hide himself behind a mask of confidence and arrogance and yet I never felt like he was being genuine as every sentence seeming feels like he's masking the real words he wants to say. His character is fundamentally complex for Ace Attorney and in my own opinion, I believe he is one of the most tragic characters in the series, purely based on how much he lost. No matter what he did, he just kept losing and sometimes as humans, you keep losing and you just keep losing until sometimes you just say to yourself, I don't want to do this anymore. Bland lived in mediocrity throughout his entire life in the truth and it somehow managed to get worse in what should have been his twilight years. His character works because his front of an ego hides how hurt and the suffering he goes through because he can claim to be the best at all he wants but when it comes down to it he doesn't even believe those words he doesn't think they have a right to be associated with him he can try and present himself with confidence and arrogance but that's not who Valant is or ever was he has low self-esteem and deals with terrible levels of loneliness the same weight on his shoulders that has been carried for seven years straight no one asks Valant how he's doing they don't care about him it's all about his career not the main man behind it all they care more about Zach than him the shame in his heart a man who wallowed in self-pity for so long he probably doesn't even know what real happiness is. His mentor essentially told him he was not good enough, losing out on love, and then his one final shot at stardom is crushed by the same man he despised. And even then, Valant realized that Zach tried to look out for him, creating a false confession just so people would stop slandering his name. That's when Valant fully realizes where his pain has been guiding him, down the wrong path of self-deprecation and the hatred of everyone who didn't allow him to be himself. He's the opposite of Adrian, as her depression stems from the loss of someone she cared about, whereas Valant's likely depression stems from his repeated failures and never being equal to the greatness he craves and I feel in a more complex way that makes him more tragic because this is pure hatred of everyone and himself, self-destructive behaviour that he struggles to find his way out of until the very end. His character for me is nearly perfect and I one day hope he will return or make a cameo of sorts. That'll be all for me, subscribe if you want to see more, bye!